Hello and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer. And in today's video, we're going to be talking all about three easy ways you can animate your lettering in Adobe Fresco. These are going to be organized by level of difficulty, but honestly, all three of these animation methods are approachable enough for beginners. This video will help you learn a little bit more about animation and ways that you can bring your lettering to life in a new way. Ready? Let's get animated. So this first level is going to be something of a staggered appearance. So that means that each one of these words will pop up onto the screen separately. So before you start animating, I'll always recommend duplicating the layer that you want to animate. So in this case, it's going to be the layer that has my lettering on it. I will always duplicate this and then just turn one off. And that's just to have one layer for safekeeping because once you apply motion to a layer in Adobe Fresco, it cannot be undone. So from here, we're going to go to this bottom right hand corner, which is our motion panel, and you'll see your timeline pop up at the bottom. So like I said, we're going to be doing sort of a staggered appearance animation. So I'm going to need to start with a blank frame and I'll do that by pressing the plus sign icon. And then you can just press, hold and drag over your frame so that it's in the number one position. Every frame will be numbered so you'll know where you are in your animation timeline. So my first frame, I want it to be blank to start. Now, this will be my final frame where all of my lettering is full and the whole phrase is spelled out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap this once. I'm gonna hit duplicate frame. This ensures that I have my full spelled out phrase for my end frame, and then I can start working from my second frame to start doing some edits. So the basic idea for this is we're going to be using our selection tools specifically our lasso. And I like to use the lasso tool because you can just draw onto your canvas around any selection that you wanna make and easily remove anything. So once your selection is, is highlighted with the little marching ants going around it, a secondary menu will appear at the bottom and you can just tap erase. Then tap deselect and there you go. So now we're just going to repeat this process. So I'm going to duplicate my end frame, select my new working frame. So now I want this second frame to say, hey there. So I'm going to delete this third word using my lasso tool, hitting erase and then deselecting. And then by the last frame, you'll have the whole phrase spelled out you always have the option of taking your timeline and scrubbing back and forth to see how things are looking to get a nice preview. But also whenever you're ready to play back your animation, you can just hit play all. You can see by default, it plays pretty fast. So we're going to adjust that by going to our settings. Frames per second, will usually by default be set pretty high to 15. So if you lower it to about three or two, you'll get a much slower, more controlled animation. So that means the lower the amount of frames per second you have, the slower your animation will be. Now, I generally like this. Our, the whole idea of this effect was achieved well, but I just want this to play and hold for a few more frames, I think. I think four frames is a little fast. So it lingers on screen a little bit. So all I did was just duplicate my end frame two more times so that it would just hold a little bit longer before it looped back. So as you can see, that was super easy, super approachable didn't take much time at all. So let's take a look at our level two animation. So this effect is one that I like to call the wiggle because it sort of makes your lettering move and dance a little bit. Again, I'm going to take my lettering layer here, activate motion, 
at the bottom. So for this, I'm going to have my lettering on the first frame and I'm gonna hit that plus sign icon like before. But this time, I'm gonna to go to my settings tab and I'm gonna to toggle on onion skin. What onion skin allows me to do is see a ghost of my lettering from the first frame on this second frame so that I can trace over it. Now, the idea of this effect is to trace over the lettering, yes, but you don't want it to be extremely exact. So you're actually going for a bit of irregularity. You don't want it to be perfect. You just want it to essentially be similar enough that you can still tell that it's the same piece of lettering, but you want there to be some variations because that's what's going to give it the illusion of movement and wiggling. All right, so once you're done filling everything in, you can take a look and see what your wiggle animation will look like. There is enough variation and difference in the letter forms that you can see a sort of movement and transformation between the two frames. And the great thing about this sort of animation approach is that you only really need two frames, just your original lettering layer and then the traced over version in the second frame. So yeah, that was level two. Let's tackle level three. For our level three animation, we are going to be achieving what is called a write-on text effect. So basically what we want it to look like is as if these words are being drawn out as the animation progresses. I have an entire tutorial about write-on text effect that you can achieve using Adobe Fresco, which I'll link in the description box below. But let's take a look. So we are going to start by hitting our plus sign icon so we can start with a nice, clean, and empty layer. I'm just going to start by getting rid of the wording, but keeping all of the little surrounding stars and dots. All right, so this will be our end frame. Again, all of the words will be spelled out. So I'm going to duplicate this and this will become my working frame. So the idea for this will be to strategically erase parts of each stroke to make it look like it's being drawn out. So I'm going to start by carefully using my lasso tool to eliminate all of the wording and information beyond that first stroke of my H. So basically you can envision it as the way that you would write out the word yourself. So I'm starting with my first stroke here. Now I want this to not just appear suddenly, I actually want it to maybe uh, appear as a first half and then a second half. So I'm going to do is duplicate that frame and I'm just going to make sure I turn on my onion skin here and I'm just going to erase about half of the stroke yeah about that so in breaking up that animation stroke we now have the stars here, we've got the first half of the stroke, and the second half of the stroke appears. So we're basically going to be using that approach for the rest of this animation. Again, this is a little bit of a, an interesting approach, so it sort of takes a little bit of thinking ahead, but this is going to essentially be the way that I approach the rest of this animation. So 
Again, I'm just going to draw a line down the middle of that stroke there. Use my lasso tool to cut around and hit erase. Then always duplicating my end frame. And then I'm going to now take a slice around that edge so that I have the other half of that stroke there. Hit erase. And I'm just going to keep doing that until the entire phrase is spelled out. You did it. The cool thing about this one is it'd be fun. You could change your playback from loop to boomerang. So it'll play once forward and then it'll play in reverse. So and then it'll go backwards. <laughs> but yeah, this obviously is the level three animation because it takes a little bit of pre-planning. So understanding each stroke, how it would look most natural to be drawn out and then erasing in segments. And obviously it takes the longest to achieve. Now, once you're done, you are satisfied with your GIF you can export and save these. And I will show you how to do that and how you can upload it onto your Giphy channel. So let's take a look. So in Adobe Fresco, in order to achieve transparency, you need to have a layer of white behind whatever your GIF is. So I, I like doing my gifts in little circle badges because they're really nice to use on like Instagram stories and stuff like that. I can then hit the export button and then go to publish and export. So now you'll see on the bottom here, motion. You're gonna choose your format and you're gonna choose GIF. And then for transparency, you're just going to toggle and select white is transparent. It'll generate your frames and you can play and preview your animation. And if it's the way you like, just hit export. And I'm just going to airdrop this over to my computer where I'll show you how I upload this to my Giphy channel. You're just going to go to giphy.com. If you don't already have an account, it's super easy to make one. Once you are ready to upload your GIF, you can do so. So I have my GIF file ready. So because my GIF includes transparency, I'm just going to hit sticker, choose file. It's here in my downloads and it'll show you a little preview of what your GIF will look like. So for Giphy, it's really cool because like I said, when you use Giphy, you can use it to have your little GIF stickers appear on Instagram, TikTok, and it's all about being really strategic with your tags. So make sure that you're using tags that are easily discoverable. I also like to use my own name as a tag because what that'll do is it will allow you to say, hey, if you search my name um, on Instagram stories, you can find all of the gifts that I've made. So if people 
just want to find your gift specifically, you can tag them under your name or maybe under your artist name and you'll be able to have all of your gifts easily um, organized and discovered in that way as well. So now we can hop over to the Instagram app and take a look at our Giphy gift sticker. So for this, I just use the create feature. I tap that little face at the top and right into the search bar, I'm going to type in my name. This is why I like to include my name as a part of my tags. As you can see, we've got this latest one that we just made right in the app. And yeah, there it is ready to use. I can include this in my Instagram stories. I really encourage you to use this as an application for your animated lettering. This is really accessible and it's a really great thing to be able to know how to do, especially if you want to end up doing this for clients. So yeah, this is looking great. I'm super happy with how this turned out. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it, share it with a friend and leave me a comment with any questions that you might have. I have a whole video outlining how to animate in Adobe Fresco. I will link in the description box below. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.